All right, buckle up for the third episode of Ghost Facers, a supernatural <laughs> rewatch podcast. Uh, things get wet. Yeah, three episodes in, you're already distracted by how how wet this episode is. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and and ghost child ghosty. Yeah. Uh, very separate from the wet piece, but still important. Yeah. Weird way to set it up. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I need to go. Welcome to Ghost Facers, a supernatural rewatch podcast. Uh, my name is Richard, and nope, that's not how we do this show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Facers. Today we're talking about episode number three, Dead in the Water. That's aired, right. Yeah, that's right. Aired September 27th, 2005. This episode was written by Sarah Gamble and Rael Tucker. Nice. This is the first Sarah Gamble episode, which is a big deal. And if you're if you're sort of aware of the supernatural world, she took over actually as showrunner in uh, for season six and seven. Uh, those are the Sarah right. Gamble seasons, and and has written some of the best sort of episodes. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of what she does. Mm-hmm. So I was excited to see her. I don't know about much about Ryle Tucker, but uh, I was excited to see Sarah pop up on this one. Yeah, she has. Uh, she's done some really cool, like supernatural interviews on her Instagram lately too. Right. Uh, she does these sort of writer on writer discussions that are cool. And this episode was directed by Kim Manners and was viewed by an estimated 5 million point, like 01 viewers. Right. So, Dead in the Water, uh, TV guide, uh, as we always do, uh, descri- uh, we go to the description, in which says, The brothers hunt for a lake-dwelling spirit that killed the father of a young boy who sees visions connected to the creature and communicates by drawing pictures. Yeah. We're we're talking about a, uh, a, 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 a this is a water episode. This is the wettest episode we've gotten yet. Oh my god! Yeah, strap in. Yeah, <laughs> Jensen with his shirt off every single frame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we've. I thought because you know this is the first season. Yeah, and because we're sort of getting introductions to some of these monsters uh i i thought that today when we go over to dad's journal yeah we would do something pretty broad uh which is ghosts oh very very generally um because uh quote unquote monster wise that's what we're dealing with here but the episode like sort of touches on a bunch of different potential things Mm -hmm. so uh well before we do that um uh, first of all, the featured music for this episode. Oh yeah, uh, I I always like this. Be- we're still dealing with. Uh, if you're watching on a streaming platform, you're not getting these songs, and that's right. I'm still waiting for my uh, for the right. I-, I still haven't figured out what DVD collection I'm gonna get yet. Because part of me is like, do I wait for the full thing? And but that means I'm waiting a year potentially right. to, or even longer, to be able to get the full sort of full set. Or do I order just the individual DVDs? My, or my wife this close today to getting me five seasons of Supernatural oh. when we were out shopping. Where where were they in town? Uh, at, at Wally. Really? Uh, at Walmart. Uh, I went there and they only had season 13. They had the box set for season 6 to 10. Oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. That's uh, sort of why I told her not to. Yeah, I was yeah, like, if the, you see 1 to 5. Yeah, get it. <laughs> like, get it. <laughs> 1 to 5. Get it. Um, but yes, the featured music for this episode. Uh, one, we get Rat. Uh, mm. which I love, uh, Round and Round. Oh, I'm so sad that I didn't get to hear that. I'm looking forward to finally hearing that for the first time. Yeah. Um, Black Toast Music, which I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, the sure. song is uh, What a Way to Go. Ooh. Uh, Billy Squire. Uh, okay. Two Days Cone. Uh, two Days Gone. Uh, uh, and Bad Company, Moving On. Of course. Some classic ones in this one, for sure. Yeah, Bad uh, Company is like straight out of uh, Dean's uh, cassettes of music. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, um, maybe uh, uh, before we get into our thoughts on today's episode, let's open up Dad's journal and learn some of the real world lore about today's monster. Yeah, we're talking about ghosts, um, which is a, such a broad catch all uh, because there's like subclasses of goat. Uh, goats of ghosts and stuff like that. Um, 
Th- this this one's I'll say that like this version of Ghost is probably like the the pitch for this is probably one of the scariest ones for me. This is one of the scariest episodes, yeah, because it's dealing with deep water and that scares me. Well, yes, absolutely. Um, that's that's the uh, the old uh, thalassophobia. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, both thals- thalassophobia tit really what scares me is large objects inside of the water. Right. Uh, um, but still, so you can't come swimming with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um but i i think that like the way that they do, and we'll get into it when we get into the episode but the way that they sort of shoot this one uh is super interesting uh their sort of use of water and like how, how they make it scary is really really cool totally but i mean ghosts in the water i didn't even think that was a thing and now well it's it's funny because water spirits and vengeful ghosts are almost two entirely separate things if okay. you're looking at like quote unquote real world like lore yeah so uh just very like uh quickly ghost lore is literally in every single culture all the way back to the beginning of time it's usually because it has something to do with you know separating the idea of a physical body from your spirit or things like that so uh lose so much weight (laughs) the word itself though the word ghost um a couple of potential origins for the word comes from like a proto-indo-european word that means fury or anger or a norse word that means to rage oh so the partying the party ghost yeah that well and that's as you know, Norse uh, left a rager. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a rager. Um, so the idea of a ghost in general is something that is agitated. And especially when you look at the fact that ghosts are meant to be like spirits left behind. Mm-hmm. So it's usually because uh, they died violently or unexpectedly or their funeral rites were incomplete or like non-existent. Um, so it's about like, this is some, uh, uh, that your soul or your spirit has not been put to rest. Your body has died, but you're, you're not done. It mm-hmm. might, you might have unfinished business or you might not be ready to move on or whatever the, the case what is. If you're, what if you're uh, uh, in your last, like, well, you, you wanted your, like, shoes to be placed in a specific place. That way your, like, soul can be, like, put to rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or a very particular kind of fish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you tuck that into a bed so yeah. your soul is put to rest. <laughs> um, it's the, my, my funeral is going to be so much fun. <laughs> it's funny because in some cultures, vengeful ghosts, which yeah. is sort of what we're dealing with in this episode, totally. are almost all women. It's almost as oh, if yeah. the cultures take it as a given that women were treated poorly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, yes. But also, like, is that like weirdly self-aware for the culture um they didn't do anything about it but um so so there's um uh, almost every culture on earth has afterlife beliefs that involve laying a spirit to rest after death and like Mm -hmm. i said sometimes that doesn't work if they died violently or something like that um other uh, is that like gin or rum (laughs) kind of spirits yeah God, you're on fire today. I know. I'm in a mood. I don't know. Uh, so synonyms and subcategories of ghosts, yeah. which we will also get to later in this podcast yeah. uh, as we go through, uh, include uh, um, poltergeists, shades, specters, wraiths, phantoms, uh, etc. cetera. Um, there's a couple of specific ones uh, specific to different cultures that are interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. Mogwai is uh, in uh, Chinese folklore is a vengeful ghost or a demon. You can't get wet. Uh, yeah, and yeah, you know, don't feed them after midnight. Yeah. Um. Uh. The uh, Onryo is a Japanese one. Uh, it's a spirit that returns from purgatory to right a wrong. Done I like to, to dunk those in milk. Good lord! <laughs> I wow. <laughs> um. Woman in white. We've talked about. Uh. We talked about those ones. It's a very specific. Uh. Sort of visual aesthetic and a pretty specific story. Usually that like La Harona kind of story. Yeah. Um, there's a, a, a dibuk in uh, Jewish folklore, which is like a possessing spirit, uh, and uh, one called a, a, a keris, which uh, from ancient Greece, it was spirits born of violent or cruel death. Now, the weird thing here is we're talking about a vengeful spirit that is tied to a lake in this episode. But for the most part, water spirits in real world folklore are more tied to like fey folk, fairies, nymphs. Things like that. Things that could potentially pose a threat, 
but are generally a little bit more ethereal, a little bit more like they're water elementals. Yeah. Um, water spirits tend to be a little bit more like guardians or protectors in real world lore, yep. as opposed to being like a vengeful spirit locked in a, a lake. Um, so it's sort of interesting that like our first foray into like water ghosts is so counter to what the, the, like the real world lore of a water spirit is absolutely i mean it's not it's not going for the same uh the same thing like this isn't a murderous water nymph in this episode but it it is it it did strike me as funny that um like the haunted lake is where they go with the water spirit as opposed to more kind of fairy stories yeah um they do talk a bit about um the loch ness monster in this yeah um but it's one of only a couple of times i think that the loch ness monster comes up uh in in the show at all yeah yeah Um, it's not something that they address because i I don't think it's like if it if it does exist i don't think it's a monster i think it does exist in the world of supernatural i'm pretty sure there's an episode where someone makes an offhand comment about how it is real but it's also presumably in Loch Ness because the guys are in the states; they're not going to run into it. Maybe, maybe in, a, in a like a landlocked inland lake in the states. Maybe if that if that comes up again, uh, uh, um, maybe on the like millionth episode about ghosts, we can address the Loch yes, Ness monster. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but basically, what we're dealing with is this sort of very general idea of a ghost with a, a violent death who uh cannot the, the spirit cannot move on and it's it's out for revenge but it happens to be tied to this lake wow all right um very interesting before we get into today's episode let's talk about a couple uh behind the scenes uh, uh factoids before yeah, we jump totally. into it uh, number one uh i don't know how but jared padalaki's hand was partially broken while filming the p- part of this uh episode really yeah interesting yeah. Did uh, they like leave the shot in? Is it like the Aragorn kicking the helmet thing? <laughs> like, or or uh, Mission Impossible when he does the yeah, jump? Yeah. Did it make it into the episode? Uh, I don't think it was. It was not during the episode. It was sort of. Oh, uh, just like sort of concurrently in yeah. his own life. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, shoot. Uh, um, though the next one, there is a moment like that that we'll uh, address nice. when we get there. And also, fun piece of information: Sam, th- this is the same uh, lake scene uh, appeared in another Jensen Ackles movie, Devour from. 2005 uh yeah so they use a very similar leak scene so very nice yeah all right well uh without further ado let's jump in to today's episode that's right uh of course we always start with uh for this first season you gotta every single episode gotta hammer home exactly what the show's i was trying to remember when the show transitioned to the then now uh, mm-hmm. sort of version that's something we'll have because to right uh, now no. it's this it's almost like at the start of each episode is a trailer for the show because what? it has so much explanation it's like really trying to get people on board with the show well, exactly and it's not i mean you can't stream them so nobody knows ne- necessarily what the show is about and yeah silly internet is not what it becomes and so not necessarily everybody's like on google looking up these shows before they start watching them right yeah, so exactly. um so it's interesting that they yeah, sort of not like now where we can't enjoy anything organically we got <laughs> Check Twitter before <laughs> before a new show starts. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, all right. So, as this uh, episode starts, um, we're gonna we're gonna start with this sort of opening um, uh, scene in Lake Manitowoc, Wisconsin. That's right. It's a it's a, a family at home. It's a dad and his two kids who are about sort of looks like high school, maybe just should be in college age. Uh, the daughter is about to go like out for a workout and the, like her brother is her dirtbag brother. Yeah. Her dirtbag brother is like, oh, guys don't like buff chicks. And she <laughs> says something like girls don't like guys that live at home. Uh, <laughs> and so she goes out to the lake to go, uh, go swim. This is so like on brand for, especially these like early season CW things. It's like beautiful woman dive into a lake. Come on in, enjoy our show. Well, what's funny is that this is um, the this opening scene uh, is actually uh, exactly like the one from uh, 1975's movie Jaws. Oh, is that what it's riffing on? Yeah, it's like well, with yeah, this, I mean, with the shot underneath and stuff like that. So, they literally shot for shot, uh, uh, um, copied it. So. Oh, oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it definitely works because there's like a tension, and also they've done something to the color grading. 
Well, it's a thing that like, this whole first season does really. There's not necessarily digital color grading back then. Well, this was maybe film, maybe is, so this was but... shot on film too. So uh, they... but the water looks black. Uh, you know, like the the saturation has been sort of seeped out. So even the trees, though green, are kind of grayish. Like everything about this sort of looks inky and scary, and you can't see down into the lake to and... see what grabs the daughter and and pulls her under a uh, big inspiration for that was actually based on like japanese uh, horror filmmaking that makes sense uh, and so even with sort of the way that they do the lake was inspired totally by that sort of genre um but yeah the um the uh the daughter slash sister gets pulled under That's right. uh and now we get to go to a diner a classic supernatural diner yep. you can check that if you have your bingo uh, uh sheet for the, supernatural yeah, that's right our, our sort of greasy spoon uh hunting food basically uh yeah we're getting dean he's looking for cases basically you're getting a them. classic dean meme coming up at uh three minutes and four seconds that scene right there, that shot is a classic uh, gif if you're looking oh, for Dean. Really? Yeah, yeah. Him with his like mouth open drooling over this waitress. With, with the pen in his mouth and yeah. the smile. That's a that's a classic uh, uh, Dean meme. I do like this version of Dean too. Uh, you know, like we're allowed fun once in a while. That's fun. Yeah, pointing, pointing at, at the waitress. The waitress. <laughs> it, this show does a really interesting, especially this first season where it's like just on the cusp of being a, like... Of being just straight up misogynist. Yes. Yeah. It's a thing that they really toe the line, like very carefully sort of walking that tightrope with this show um, where it's like, well, they're not saying anything bad. They're just kind of being like... I, I'll, I'll see. I think it's something that lends a bit of authenticity to... The genre, I think. Well, and to the show, which yeah. is that like, listen... They're not going to be straight up dirt bags, but he is. Dean is meant to be twenty six, and Sam is meant to be twenty two. And yeah. even though they've had this other life, like they're still their they're, age. They, yeah, they're going to say stupid things. They're going to be assholes. They're going to like. They're going to need evolving objectify, views of. They're going to objectify and women, like and it's a thing that that. So it doesn't glorify it, but I think it does. It, it they are saying like, listen, these guys are not perfect. They're kind of you know. <laughs> They're flawed guys who grew up with just a male role model who wasn't really around. Yeah. Um, and like, and that does evolve over time. But certainly in these early episodes, you're getting a lot of like, awooga kind of <laughs> vibes off Dean. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Sam is very much like the educated one who don't doesn't see women yeah. in that way. Well, who also just watched his girlfriend die. <laughs> So you're saying that like he's not going to be like totally up for I like... Don't, I don't think he's ready yet. He's not, he's not, he's not sporting a raging heart on in that scene. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, he definitely isn't because he doesn't even want to go look for cases. He's like, we're we're three episodes in and he's like, the trail for dad is getting cold, blah, 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 blah. And that's where Dean says something to the effect of like, not like that girl. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to, we're going to find him, but we're going to kill everything bad between here and there. So yeah. uh, they, they go to Lake Manitok. They go to uh, basically talk to the family. So they're talking to the brother. They present um, themselves as Agent Ford and Hamill. So yes, uh, yeah. uh, uh, mark that in your calendar uh, uh, or your notebook. Uh, we get another sort of uh, another episode with fake names. Now they're sort of like falling into a thing. They haven't figured out the classic rock thing necessarily, but now they're sort of joking on the whole uh, Star Wars thing, which the show is uh, clearly based off of. Yeah. Uh, well, and, uh, we, you know, this is where we get a little bit of information that's kind of exposition, but it's also to rule out like normal causes of death right? normal <laughs> well you know the, the brother says she was a varsity swimmer like yeah. she did not drown no <laughs> like that's yeah well, it I doesn't mean, make she, any sense she, she did but not on her own yes exactly <laughs> um, <laughs> um and the the they can't talk to the dad the dad's sort of just off staring by himself he's obviously uh grief stricken and things like that but basically he's saying like there's no way that like my sister just like stopped swimming or whatever like that that's something happened to her out there. i mean she did just have breakfast so i mean could you imagine if that's what the moral of the episode was was you're supposed to wait 20 minutes it's like arrested development with the like <laughs> the dad's less yeah that's why you always leave, leave a, a note, note. <laughs> god that would be amazing um so after they leave uh the the house of the dead girl uh they go to the police station uh um and uh, like like every episode they end up at the police station at some point to start asking questions uh they present themselves uh, as are, are they park rangers in this one or what are well, they're uh they're national uh oh no not park rangers but like uh like environmental know, environment something, something or, like uh, so they're talking to the sheriff. He's like, listen, we dragged the lake. We couldn't find anything. We used sonar. We couldn't find anything. And they're like, this is like three times in the last year. He's like, I, I know. 
you know, these are, this is my town. There are people close to me. But it doesn't really matter because the town's going to be washed away soon because the dam is about to get. Uh, it's actually the, I think it's the opposite. It's that the dam is old and the government won't uh, fix it. Won't fix it. So they've opened the like sluice. Yeah. So it's actually draining oh, that's the, right. the yeah, lake. Yeah, he says, yeah, because yeah, the sheriff says something like in a few months, like it won't. It won't matter anymore. There won't be any more of these deaths in the lake. And it's basically because in about six months, there won't be a lake there because uh, the feds are basically letting this dam fall apart. Yeah, exactly. Um, Um, uh, Of course, Dean meets another pretty girl, the sheriff's daughter. Pretty girl. She's a woman. She's got a kid. Uh, (laughs) She has agency, makes decisions on her own. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) I'm being a real Dean of myself right now. Come on. You're not Dean. You're not Dean. (laughs) No, I'm not. <laughs> um, um, but it's great now that this is sort of Dean immediately starts hitting on this girl. But what's great is that she's not taking his like uh, uh, shit. Like he's yeah. very much like, well, why don't you show me where this motel the, is? The, and she's like two blocks away. And he's like, I don't know directions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, I think the the best uh, like day player sort of female kind of romantic interests that they have on this show are the ones that see right through his crap. Exactly. And yeah. then when they actually get to know him can kind of fall for that part, but like they shut down the sort of what whatever he puts on. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. She's a good one. I feel like she's been in something because she seems slightly familiar. She does seem very familiar. There's yeah. a couple really good sort of day players in this one. She's one. Uh, I think the um, the 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 father uh, uh, of the the girl that dies in the beginning is pretty decent. Yeah. Um, uh, and then and the sheriff's pretty good too. too actually, I, I really like sort of yeah. the the ones that they've brought on on uh, this one. But the, there's a great line uh, when she finally brings him to the hotel and she goes, it must be hard. Because uh, he goes like, oh, thanks for, yeah, this is a line right here. Yeah. Must uh, be hard with that sense of direction. <laughs> yeah, you never being able to find your way to a decent pickup line. Well, especially, yeah, but especially because they've said that they're, yeah, like forestry yes. people or whatever the, the hell they like show up as. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's pretty good. Oh yeah, and this is where he's like, I really care about this. Uh, like these kids are gonna die, and he's like, When do you care about kids? Suddenly, like what, what, like, and, he, and he's like, I like kids, and he's like, Name three kids that you know, and he's like, well, I, Whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, and, and that's uh, because the, the the sheriff's daughter has her own kid, and he he doesn't. He, so far, we haven't. He doesn't talk. Exactly. He just kind of colors. Uh, yeah, we. Have, but then we get to that in a little bit. They uh, do start thinking that it, maybe it's a lake monster. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they, I think they almost immediately rule it out because of the sonar sweep dragging the lake. Like a lake, if it was something like a Loch Ness monster or yeah. something like that, or like a Ogopogo or whatever, they would have found I love that it. band. <laughs> Uh, we get to go to the hotel. I'm um, to the motel, uh, yeah. classic motel scene uh, where they where they're doing research, and they find out that uh, the 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 kid who doesn't talk, his dad is one of these lake victims, um, and uh, a young they, Seth Green, and the kid survived, and now he doesn't talk. So that's why the sheriff said, "Yeah, it's people close to us." That kid's not a young Seth. Green. I know, but he <laughs> looks exactly like young Seth Green. Like when Seth Green was like a really like when he was like a child actor. Really, he looks so much like Seth Green. Interesting. It's very funny. Um, but yeah, they go to uh, the park um, and uh, uh, see the uh, the uh, the daughter of the sheriff again, and we meet her son, who's who's his a name, weirdo. His, his name is Luke. Lucas. Lucas. Uh, he spends all of his time drawing, basically. He doesn't play with other kids. He doesn't talk. He's got his little army men, and he colors and, and draws, and that's it. And Dean tries to go over to, you know, uh, talk to him, see if maybe he can get any information about what happened to the dad. Yeah, he interrogates this kid. He's, yeah, yeah. he uh, he uh, throws a, a face cloth over the kid's face, and uh, <laughs> he's going to get answers no matter what the kind. Um, yeah, but he tries to sort of uh, uh, relate to him on sort of the dead parent kind of thing. Yeah, which is, I guess, the way in, but it, I mean... <laughs> Dean has a big heart, obviously, but he does not have experience with kids. So you sort of see him stumbling to make a connection. Um, and so he's just talking to the kid. And yeah, like you said, he's sort of talking about that, you know, he lost a parent and stuff like that. Um um, interesting, actually. Uh, the kid's name was Lucas uh, again because of another Star Wars reference. It's a George Lucas oh, nod. Yeah, right. uh, um, but yeah, he uh, 
yeah, right here he goes, dude, when I was your age, like I, I saw something and he was talking about, so this is, oh, like, can I zoom in? Uh, I mean, this is, I think maybe one of our first like Dean feelings scenes in the whole show. Yeah. Because like, we, we obviously know how Sam feels about At 12 things, minutes, yeah. But now we're saying like, yeah, we know Dean is tough as nails, quote unquote, but like he also like basically saw his mom die. <laughs> And it's a thing that he cares, carries with him yeah. for the entire series, really. Because um, well, he was actually old enough to remember her. Like, Sam was a baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, but He's Dean, still a baby. <laughs> but Dean was four, so he remembers a life with his mom. And yeah. then he, he could also see what it would have done to his dad, what yeah. it did to their family, you know. Um. So, yeah, he's. it's actually kind of a, a nice uh scene uh dean and the kid they actually do form a bit of a bond even though the kid like does not acknowledge him uh these kids the kids drawings though already super creepy just a swirly black hole is one of them yet Uh, still better than jensen creepy red bicycle yeah absolutely better than what jensen drew which was (laughs) stick figures Uh, which i'm assuming is actually like his drawings (laughs) yeah i think so too they were like jensen we need you to draw something for the scene and he was like all right Uh, (laughs) He's like, you might might be concerned after watching it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's good. It, it's sort of, uh, you get this uh, reflective moment with this child. And uh, now Dean's sort of hooked in because he actually does give a shit about yeah. this kid uh, and sort of can relate to his own experience with this child. So now he's, you can see sort of his level of investment. It was beyond just like the hot girl now. And is actually like, I'm concerned about this family because though they like to show Dean as this like sort of one-sided figure, he actually has many layers. Of course. And it's the same thing with the show. And I think it's actually like a, a good sort of way to sh- talk about the show in general, just sort of on the surface, it seems like it's one thing, but once you actually watch it's it's, it's a lot of other things, yeah. but it presents itself as sort of this one-sided, like hot guys, hot show. Yeah. Thing. Um, which is good. Oh, right. And then Lucas comes up and he dr- makes a drawing for Dean and hands it to him. And it's this. He's like, this is how you fucking draw, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he slaps Dean in the face. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and the mom is like, like, Lucas doesn't ever acknowledge someone. Like, I can't believe that you made a connection with my son, basically. That's wild. Um, uh, but yeah. now we go to uh, we go to the uh, dead girl's house, uh, uh, and um, yeah. the dad's like basically comatose at this point because he's so depressed, and the brother's trying to get him to eat, and yeah. he's just like, "Come on, dad! Like you got to do something." And so the uh, brother heads to the kitchen to try to make a meal for him, um, which then we encounter our second uh, ghost encounter, yeah. um, which is really cool because like he's washing dishes, I think this is, or like and he's washing a fish. That's this what it is was. so 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 creepy. So the son is like gonna make some dinner and then the water coming out of like the sink because he's gonna wash this fish turns into lake turns water into lake water and it, the sink fills up even though he hadn't plugged the drain or anything like that and it's all this sort of opaque dark kind of gray black water and the the sink completely fills up and it, you get that thing where you know something's gonna go wrong because he has to reach in to like find what's clogged the drain and you're like don't do it you can't see like use a stick use anything else (laughs) it is funny because he goes to like pull the plug out but clearly as the thing was filling out you saw that the plug wasn't in there the plug's not in yeah uh the plug is literally now it's on the cutting even though it was in the water when it was filling up yeah and now he's pulling it out that's a little continuity (laughs) issue with the show there's they clearly shot him pulling it out of the water (laughs) <laughs> before they shot the, the like the medium shots yeah. for this scene which is very funny little continuity error there it's very funny um, but he's got his arm in there he can't figure out what it is and then he gets pulled like into the sink it's a really cool shot because you get to see like his face drowning from inside the water which i love that shot it's a great direction and, and it's, it's i mean it's even more terrifying because you think you know what the setup is be like there's something in the lake but now, like this the is, lakes in the house. This is yeah. The, so it's like, is the lake killing haunted? People? Yeah, like not even just is it haunted, but like is the lake actually killing people because it's come up through the sink? And of course, once the brother is drowned, then the sink empties, and that's it. It's that is, I think, one of the creepier deaths in the first season. Is yeah, because it's brutal. It's I was really expecting s- it to be like, oh, I gotta go out. Like I yeah. left something in the boat, and then he would yeah. fall out into the lake. But it like got him at home in his sink, you know. Well, because yeah, he was saying because uh, Sam, uh, we, go, we go back to the hotel, and uh, Sam goes to Dean and goes, oh, yeah, the, the the brother now died, and he's just like drowned in the sink, which is crazy because now it's like, well, 
what are we even hunting at this point? Yeah, he brings up a water wraith or a demon, something that like controls water. But they find out that the water uh, that comes into the houses are also from the same water source, which you're understanding now why this town's going to disappear when because the, the water's all coming from one place, which is the, the the lake. And and they've come to the conclusion too that like maybe the reason that like because they they talk about that there had been deaths in that lake over many years, but now it's accelerated, and they say maybe it's because the lake's about to basically drain in the next couple of months. So whatever this thing is, it's got to get all its kills in now. Yeah. So they're like, well, we've got to move because more people are going to die. And they finally go to talk to this dad because now he's lost both of his kids. Jeez. Um, what a brutal, like, but he's so good at showing like the loss in his face. Like yeah, great I, day player. Good, good day player. Uh, uh, same with the sheriff actually in this episode. Yeah. Sheriff is really, really strong uh, uh, actor in this. Um, he does a great thing where they're trying to in, in, interrogate him a bit, and the dad's just like, "I don't give a shit who you are. Yeah, like my children are gone. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, it's worse than dying." Which yeah. is, yeah, I mean, you can really sort of see the weight that it has on him. Um, it shows so much in his eyes. I, I really liked this actor's sort of uh, the way he's playing this sort of depression. It's it works really really well. It's less about that sort of like big emotional reaction and more about sort of the subdued sort of like internalizing. Well, because that's the thing, right? You know, like not, not everyone reacts to grief with like wailing and cursing the stars and stuff like that, right? This is just something he's got to live with, and 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 he knows it. But they Dean suspects that. He's not telling them something. Mm -hmm. um, and Dean pulls out the picture that Lucas gave him, and it's this guy's house. It's like yeah. like Lucas drew a picture of the house where these people died. It so is he's like, something is up here. Something that is interesting that it just occurred to me, and I don't know if this was intentional, but the dad's name is Will Carlton, which makes me wonder if it's a Fresh Prince reference. <laughs> Why would it be? Oh, oh, just Will Carlton. I mean, this is the thing when you're doing a TV show is like you just got to come up with names for people. So like it could like who knows what the inspiration is. I really it hope it just... was intentional because you don't just give a name for no reason. Like typically there's always something they behind a name. Bill. Yeah, yeah. But yes, yeah, you're right. I do wonder about that. Um, so now time, uh, time for Dean to talk to Lucas again because uh, that was pretty creepy, kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? Uh, I like that. Uh, Every time Dean tries to talk to him, he tries to like relate to him in some way. Um, we get multiple drawings of this right red bicycle. Yeah, um, uh, I think he talks to him about the uh, the uh, the army figures in this scene. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> like he's just like yeah, I, I like to play with. It's such like a, a half ass attempt at being a. <laughs> oh yeah, and and Lucas is like clearly drawing people drowning. Yeah, <laughs> like. It's uh, kids got so much more going on. Um, this but is a very classic horror trope too, though. I mean, we talk the about disturbed this a child lot for the first season is really riffing on this as a horror show, basically. And like a kid that knows too much is like such a classic horror thing, whether or not it's because they're possessed or because they're like psychic or, or whatever. But like a kid that knows too much is one of the creepiest things you can put in a horror anything i mean children in general are, are creepy just because it's like whenever they say anything that's a little bit deep like more like surface level right. you're like what like i'm assuming even you're with your i mean your child does it all the time yeah yeah it's it's true we me am hurt <laughs> <laughs> i forgot about that one yeah yeah we haven't fully gone into the creepy church like we haven't woken up in the night whether like standing at the foot of the bed or anything like that but it's only uh, a matter of time it, it kind of is yeah to, to, it's like as soon as they do something that's like slightly out of you know, like character it <laughs> immediately becomes terrifying yeah i can't wait to be a bug. <laughs> oh my god yeah. um but yeah so um uh so as dean's having this conversation with this kid he's trying to obviously he's, he's talking about sort of like oh like uh you, you know your dad wants you to be brave and your family wants you to be trying to like Break yeah. through to this kid. And eye contact. First time in the whole episode. Lucas puts down the crayon and looks at Dean. When he's talking about the, the dad. So yeah. he uh and, and he shows and he gives Dean uh, 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 a drawing, which is now this red bike and this yellow house next to a church. Yeah, it's a picture of an yeah, a different house and there's a church and that same red bike is out front. Um 
so uh, after that, we then get into the the Impala, and uh, and we're trying to figure out sort of like what do we need to do n- next. And Sam's kind of just like checked out of this whole thing, which is really interesting. He, uh, uh, but Dean's fully committed to this family, which is interesting. So now they're trying to find this yellow house. Uh, next to a white chor- uh, church, <laughs> but I love, I love that Dean's still giving him shit for being a college boy throughout this. Like it's a thing that really, like it's only the first season that really comes up. I find, yeah. Uh, but is after that he just starts calling him a nerd. But this first season's all about him, like having gone to college, and it's a thing that he can like hold over his head. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty funny. Um, but I think so. Now after leaving this house, I think we head to they. They want to try and find like what the drawing is of. Uh, and Sam is saying, like, that's not going to be all that easy because, like, these churches are literally fucking everywhere. Um, but uh, they're talking about, you know, the kid's clearly get, having some form of premonition or whatever. He's tied somehow to whatever is happening there. But they do find the house. Uh, uh, and um, they go. It's interesting because they do a really weird way of, like, talking to this this lady where she they, they're like, hey, is there, like, a little boy who lives here in, like, a blue shirt? And she's like, not for like not for 35 years just so creepy i haven't seen that boy in yeah. 35 years oh that's a little boy is a name i haven't heard in a quite a long so time. they yeah they basically described the boy the lucas true with the red bike and he's got the and there's army men set up in this like old woman's house. exactly the same way that the child like that he had lucas had set and she up. basically says it was her son peter and that he never came home and he just disappeared and uh, and yeah, she, and she also reiterates the "it's worse than dying" thing that the the other uh, dad had said. It, he was supposed to losing yeah. your children. You He's know? supposed to ride his bike, his red bike, uh, straight home, and he never showed up. Uh, which is, and you see some old photos of him, and he, there's like another kid in in the photo with him, and you're trying to understand sort of like who who is this kid friends with. Um, and, uh, they flip into the back of the photo and they realize that, oh, this is someone that we know, Peter Sweeney and Billy Carlton. Billy Carlton. We just came from that guy's yeah. house. Will Carlton. <gasps> uh, do, 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 in West. <laughs> it's funny. You went for the actual theme. I was going to start singing. It's not unusual. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, sure. That, that works as well. Um, and the, the dad is still woefully standing at the edge of, or he's, sitting at the edge of the, the dock. Yeah, he's talking to himself, though. Yes. Uh, he's saying, I didn't understand. I didn't believe. Now I think I do. Um, and I, he says, I think I finally know what you want. Uh, which is never like a great thing to see a character say to themselves. You're like, all right. Uh, yeah. What are you going to give up? Um, but obviously what that means is he's going to give himself yeah. to the lake. The, the, the guys are putting this together a little bit. They say, what if like Bill killed Peter? Mm-hmm. Peter's spirit would be furious and wants revenge. Uh, and so but by the time they show up, um, I think Bill has already given himself up to the, the lake. Well, he's into his boat. He heads, yeah, he's, he's heading out to the water. He's heading out on the lake. The guys can't stop him. And yeah, the thing just like takes the entire boat and the dude <laughs> yeah which is pretty crazy yeah so theoretically this should be over now yeah i mean and that's kind of what the guys sort of think at this point they're like yeah well you know guys dead time to hit like uh, go packing yeah um but this is also the same point i think where the police officer sort of realizes what's going on as well and sort of is like get the fuck out of my town yeah he basically like tells them to like get the hell out um because he's like you guys don't know uh, like yeah he called like to the feds and he's like listen no one's ever heard of you uh which is a great thing that i think they do a bunch throughout this show is it's sort of the cops like often figure out sort of part way through that like oh you guys it's 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 sort of they're like you guys are not good at pretending to be these people. Yes, and yeah. so it, it's a thing that they slowly are trying to learn that it's like oh like they keep figuring us out yeah. halfway through these things. So we need to like and it's a thing that the show will address sort of later on, which is one of the, another one of the great things the show does, which is like oh like 
like lessons are had. It's not like seven seasons down they're still making the same mistakes. It's yes, a thing that exactly. the, the show will uh, sort of figure out as they go through. The sheriff basically is running them out of town, though. Yeah, um, and now the kid's drawing these circles still. Like the kid, the kid's still disturbed. Yeah, which I think this is your first clue that it's not over because it has like the kid's still drawing these drawings. He's still drawing the black circles. Like something else is still happening. Um, but as they're sort of driving away, uh, Dean's like, no, fuck this. Like, I need to turn around. Um, uh, and Sam's just like, we're done. We're, we, and he's like, well, what if we're not? And we don't know it. Like, yeah, like, well, I, there was no it, ambulances. Clearly, there's not, it's not the end of this because, well, yeah, because, because Dean is suspicious about the being run out of town, just yeah. the way that he was suspicious about Bill before not telling them something. Um, uh, so, and it's also one of those things where I think, like, maybe part of the job of the hunter, you stick around a little bit, yeah. just make sure it's done, then you move on, right? But these guys are still just uh, sort of figuring out how to do this on their own without their dad's sort exactly. of support, right? So they're just We're like, cutting back and forth to seeing the, the, the mom, the sheriff's daughter, uh, she's making herself a bath. Uh, which, uh, you know, like if the sink made you nervous because you knew that something someone was getting happen, into water and it's home. one of those like freestanding like bathtubs with like the cloth kind of thing, which is like, that's always where a murder happens. Also, never, why are you filling the water in, up that far? It's never in one of those like plexiglass full shower tub units. It's always in a freestanding tub. Well, of course. Yeah. Don't have a freestanding tub. Yeah. If it doesn't have one, the automatic drain thing that like when the water gets too thing high. away from this show. No freestanding no cloth freestanding. Lo- tub. <laughs> um yeah but it's funny because the water she fills it up so high which it then goes away but i'm like the black water starts filling up this yeah. tub just so f- creepy and you start hearing come play with me from a boy yeah and just then terrifying. something is trying to pull her into the tub and she's like she's struggling it's it's not just like oh and then you can shake it loose and, and get out right it's overpowering her it's pulling her into the tub Dean is trying to knock on the door, ring the doorbell. No one's answering. And then Lucas comes to the door and he's super scared. So he follows Lucas. Uh, they uh, they go upstairs. There's water on the floor. Uh, and uh, yeah, Sam is like all of his muscle. Like all and, of his and muscle. And Sam's got so much muscle. Oh, oh, God. It's not even the full amount. I know. Depth, there's but, so much more coming. Uh, but he, they do manage to pull the mom out and save her from the tub. Which impressively also, while naked and don't show anything, which is, I mean, good filmmaking. Yeah, masterful blocking. Yeah. Uh, and also, while Sam is pulling her... Now, this is p- part of the actors being respectful while yeah. they're blocking. But I Looking like to, away. I also like to think of it as, like, Sam being very respectful. To Jared. Like, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to... No, I think Sam, like, oh. I'm going to save you, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to make every effort not to, like, unintentionally grope you as I do it. Yeah. Like, it's clearly because they're actors and they're doing that, but I also like to think that Sam That's what is Sam like is. Yeah. yeah. Sam's just like, you know, he, he's got that emotional side and yeah. he's respectful to women. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so now we're after sort of the, the, the uh, almost drowning mm-hmm. and, um, and clearly everybody's been oh, like... Oh, it's a- Amy Acker. That's why. Oh, Yes, that's what is she from? Oh, okay, need, you you keep going with with the show. I gotta I gotta work on Amy. Acker. And so as he's sort of talking to Amy Acker uh, after the potential drowning, she's realizing that the uh, um, she's sort of recounting what had happened to her and and keeps saying that the boy keeps saying like uh, come play with me and there's this like it's a boy that like a small child that clearly like something happened to. Um, and Dean's back in the house looking through like old family photos and stuff, um, and realizes like, uh, that not only was the, uh, the, the other guy friends with, uh, this kid, but they were all the, the, the sheriff was also in this scout troop and was friends with, uh, the boy who drowned as well. Yeah. So clearly there's connection to their family. Um, and the story's a little bit deeper. Maybe that, maybe she's involved because her f- father, the sheriff, was also involved in exactly. it. Exactly. It's this big sort of huge connection. So who is she from uh, again? Amy Acker. Uh, she was on Angel. Uh, she was on Alias. Uh, she was on Person of Interest. Uh, a big time TV actor. She's been on a ton of series. Um, but uh, yeah, that's why she looks familiar is because we've seen her a ton of times on other things. Um, so, uh, the boys cabin in the woods. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm like, she looks super familiar. Um, but suits. 
Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So now Lucas is sort of being weird as he always is, uh, and looking outside, and then he takes the uh, the the boys and uh, his mom to this random spot outside the house, um, where the guys start uh, decide to start digging because the uh, the kids are just being weird at this one random spot. Yeah, <laughs> they, they're pretty sure this must be like where Peter is, but what they dig up is the bike. Yeah, the red bicycle. This is Peter's bike, and that's when and the then- sheriff shows up and is pointing a gun at them. And is shaking, and clearly, like, um, they figured it out. Well, yeah, and he said, like, uh, you know, how did you know that happened? And then they said, did you kill, you know, like, yeah, Bill did you, and that? Did you, you drown the them? kid, didn't you? And you buried the the bike outside. Uh, and uh, Amy Acker, I'm just going to keep calling her Amy Acker. Yeah, now. that's fair. Uh, she sees uh, them and decides uh, uh, that she's going to help out. So she gets the kid to to stay in the house, and she goes to try to so- uh, stop her father from killing these two guys. Right. Um. Yeah, it's then they're basically going. All right, this is the point where they go. All right, this is a fucking ghost. Uh, you guys, yes, have, yeah. uh, you, you guys have seen enough supernatural shit that I can finally tell you what's actually going on here, which is sort of the classic supernatural trope. Mm-hmm. Uh, at a certain point, they get to this where they go. Okay, now I can sort of the veil can be lifted, and you guys can hear about creepy shit. Um, so now they need to know, sort of, like, were you dumb enough to to like burn the body, or is it actually did you bury this kid somewhere? Yeah, and. Uh, uh, yeah. They say like we need to find these remains. Blah 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 blah. Meanwhile, that the boy voice that come play with me, Lucas hears it. Yeah, was running off because it's like if I can't get Amy Acker, I'm gonna go get uh, young Seth Green. Yeah, because basically <laughs> this the spirit of Peter is going after yeah their kids. There is going to take out their families and then take them out. Right, going to make them suffer as much as possible for what they did to uh to to him it re. Killing him uh, as children. Um, so they were saying they were they basically they were bullying him. They held him under the water too long and he drowned. Uh, and then it's I think so it's, which is also a classic uh, horror trope thing too, where like the 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 kid that gets bullied ends up coming back for revenge. But I think the further thing though as well is that they they didn't. Uh, they threw the body in the lake. Yeah. Which is why this ghost is tied to the lake and tied to the water. Uh, so, yeah, Lucas goes to, f- like, fish a little army man out of the lake. They try to run down there to to get him. Uh, and he gets pulled into the water. But hand the creep, comes out. Oh, so creepy. The good old creepy hand comes out of the water. Um, but that's when and you we get, see oh, the face. Oh. So creepy. The drowned kid comes, like, poking out of the water. It's... It's really so now great. the sheriff kind of believes the ghost story basically. Uh, Sam and Dean jump into the water, which is God, they're so brave, oh, so hot and so brave. How can you be so hot and brave? Now they're gonna get all wet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're not the only ones. Yeah, give me a second here. <laughs> um, so they uh, they're now searching for the kid, but. They know what needs to happen. The, the well, sheriff the, realizes he needs to get into the water. Yeah, the, basically, Sam and Dean can't find the kid. The water's too dark. They can't see him. The sheriff walks into the water. He says, I know what you want. Let the boy go. Take me. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, that's basically what the ghost does. Yeah, well, because it's unfinished business. And if they can't get the body because they threw the body into the water. Exactly. It needs to finish its business, which is getting revenge on these two guys. Exactly. So uh, they uh, they save the boy. They save Lucas. Uh, and the sheriff, uh, the sheriff goes down big time. Um, Huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we get our uh, end, of course, the, the, the end of the episode. There's no ambulances. So, so now we just get to have the like somber conversation with the victim. Walk out to the car. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, who gets now? It's always a toss up of who gets to like talk to the girl at the end. Well, I mean, it's obviously Dean. Dean's the one that made the, the connection with Lucas. But Dean gets to talk to Lucas and Sam oh, gets to talk to the girl of this oh, one. Oh, yeah. Way to go, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Sam gets a gets one thrown to him every once in a while. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But he's yeah. a respectful man, so he doesn't do anything. Well, I mean, he didn't have any chemistry with her. Anyway. Yeah, he had no chance. I mean, Sam. <laughs> Come on, he's twenty two. <laughs> um, also, yeah, this this is like a full grown woman who's probably like in her thirties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like um, you fucking twerp. Just because you're seven foot tall doesn't mean you have a chance with me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's a certain, I mean, she's obviously relieved, but there's a certain amount of, I'd say, like, uh, melancholy for her because she found out that her dad was a murderer. 
<laughs> and then she watched her dad die. Yes. By a lake ghost. <laughs> um at the so at the end here we get sort of Dean's one on one with Lucas. Um, who's now talking again. Yes, he is. Um, and Dean gets, he's like, well, remember what I told you? And he's like, Zeppelin rules. <laughs> yeah. uh, which it's is awesome. So cute. Um, also, like a couple years after this, I think, is when uh, Jensen has his first kid and names him Zeppelin. Jensen's kid is named Zeppelin? Oh, that's why I made that joke earlier before we went on Mike, is his kid's name are Arrow and with Arrow, so Hawkeye, uh, and uh, Zeppelin. What? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I believe its first kid was Zeppelin. Wow. Fucking rules. It's why he's the best. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> Not into it? No, that's that's a little... That's weird celebrity behavior I wouldn't expect from him. I would expect him to be like, I'm not going to name my kid something stupid. Like, give them like, my kid's name is Ryan or like, whatever. Like... <laughs> Like, <laughs> I'm a little surprised at that. If you if you if you get the chance, watch the uh, Jensen Ackles like house tour. Yeah, he's he's not he's not he, he's right. not Dean. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but he does love classic rock, which is a good thing. Yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, and then the boys drive off. Time to the littlest hobo move on to the next town. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, reference that only Canadians. In, yeah. from the 70s we'll uh, <laughs> understand uh, but yes uh, uh, we've we've we watched episode number three dead in the water that's right so what would uh, what's your final thoughts and rate this out of uh, five lake ghosts uh, lake ghosts I was gonna say dead boys but yeah <laughs> oh let's, go with, let's go with let's go with let's go with ghosts out of five five lake ghosts that's what I was gonna say <laughs> um this i think i mean gosh these these first few episodes uh of season one i've seen so many times and what's great about these especially is that they age super well i mean the these are 15 years old and still like to this day i like are super easily rewatchable i think they yeah. look great but it's one of the the great things that david nutter did was at the beginning he he really set the show up for like a, a really consistent visual styling that has aged really well. Yeah. And, and I think it's because they were trying to do something classic, which sort of in itself uh, becomes sort of timeless. Um, and, and it's an easy, easily digestible, easily understandable uh, uh, concept with the sort of lake monster. It's a, yeah. it's a thing that we're, we're all, we've all been afraid of at some point, which is like, uh, like the lake water and like what's touching your feet. Even and... when I know what's touching my feet, I have a problem with that in lakes up here where it's like, I know it's just like little like grayling or something like swimming by and I'm like, I've... <sighs> it's one of the biggest, pro <laughs> it's one of the best and worst things about this show is that we live in like the places that all of these episodes are always sort of taken place so, in. Sort of remote in like a boreal forest. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's a sort of an environmental <laughs> conservation area. It's got a, like a, Yeah feels remote northern canada which feels is kind of ancient in yeah. its own way yeah they're all sort of filmed in places that look like where we live <laughs> so it makes things just a little bit extra level of creepy yeah, it's true. um and then for me i mean the extra level of like water makes it really creepy for me um and you're not dealing with sort of like uh uh weird esoteric uh, uh creatures it's like a ghost in the water which is sort of easily understandable so and we're getting sort of like uh meat and potatoes sam and dean in this too which is like sam's the emotional sort of uh, a one and and Dean's the like a Han Solo like smart cracking guy, but you get a little bit of that emotional connection to him. So yeah. for me, it it's such an easy like uh, uh, bar for them to hit, uh, and it's an easy episode to. I always think about like if I was just going to send this to someone, could they could they get behind this and understand what the show is? One because right. they do the like what happens at the beginning of the show <laughs> at the, each of these episodes, course, but yeah. it's a really easy sort of one to dive into. <laughs> dive into. <gasps> Um, see what you did there. Yeah, yeah, see. Um so for me this is this is an easy like uh I would say 4.5 go uh, uh water ghosts. Wow. Yeah, these first few episodes they they I mean it's the reason why it's so easy to get into this show because it's like episode 1's kind of the rocky thing but I mean it's it's a pilot. It's so hard to get past. I think it does a pretty good job for what it was doing. For what it's doing, I think so, but it's like 
if you're if the reason why it's so easy to dive into this show, dive into the show uh all right yeah it was good yeah. the first time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is because these first few episodes are such a solid yeah. uh foundation that the show is built off of that it makes it so simple to sort of go from to keep watching and binge the the, the show so yeah for me it's it's an it's an easy win it's it's not like top-notch writing but it's yeah. it's it's got all of the like solid pieces that sort of if you like if you sort of put them in front of you and just like like okay this is like how you write a a, a script it's it's yeah. got sort of a great uh, like interesting middle you got sort of the part where you think it's over and then they bring it back like it's 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 solid script writing and, and for me that that makes it sort of it's on the top tier but it's a, it, it's not like the pinnacle of what they do yeah i mean i i, I think i generally agree with all of that i mean it's uh this one more than the Wendigo episode is really going for like kind of classic identifiable like horror iconography. I mean, even you said they basically shot for shot to Jaws at the beginning, right? Yeah. They're riffing on other things or they're riffing on Japanese horror or stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it does feel a little bit like it was it, it was though a really great episode it didn't feel quite as like the wendigo one i was just like so impressed that that was the monster they picked i was like holy cow that's what a great like pick and the you know like the mindset was really cool yeah i really liked the setup of that episode this episode is a little bit more like what are our identifiable horror basics and going back to some of those things a little bit totally. uh, but totally well executed uh i think i would give this four lake ghosts I think this is a four out of five late ghosts. It's interesting that for you it go it comes under Wendigo. The, that I I, I, I yeah. The I still Wend don't the understand Wendigo, the Wendigo I, one. Just it gets me. That's, that's so the, interesting because yeah. I like that episode. Even but, even on rewatching because like I I really liked this episode. Yeah, going back watched, to it. Yeah, and and going back to it. I I do. I think it's a, I think it's a very very solid episode. But something about that Wendigo one was just. Yeah, just put it over the, the over the the edge. I think for sure. Yeah. Um, well, that's it for this week. Uh, if you, uh, we would love to hear what you think about this episode. Where yeah, does it please. rank on you? Uh, um, where I mean, this is episode three. Uh, uh, so I'd love to know sort of like what are your how do these rank towards you? Like, is Wendigo your number one? Yeah. Uh, uh, how how do these top three episodes sort of uh, uh, rank for you? Um, also, if you have any sort of notes or things that we uh, missed on this or a future episode, make sure to reach us through our email. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com and uh, you can also uh, catch us on Twitter at ghostfacerspod. Oh, that's right. That's right. I saw that you uh, set that up. That's oh, nice. Yeah. So now we're on Twitter too. So have conversations with us on social media. We can, we'd love to hear what you think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, unlike a lot of those uh, private Facebook groups, we don't mind shipping. <laughs> uh, still weird about Wincest though. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's objectively weird. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it, but it's weird. But I mean, I get it. Oh, I get it. I get. I mean, I could. I could have. Could, could not get it more. Yeah, Dean looked into Sam's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. That's it. Uh. Say goodbye, bitch. I figure for two guys talking about supernatural, it should be in the dark. <laughs> yeah, just let me get his pants off. This was a brain freeze podcast. <laughs>